Today, we're going to set up and test the limitations of facial recognition on an ESP32 cam on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The ESP32 cam is a really interesting little board. And one of the best things about it is it is incredibly cheap and it has just enough RAM to be able to do on-chip facial recognition. Now, this is really cool because it involves two different things at once. One is facial detection and the second is facial recognition. And there's two burn-in processes that allow you to both recognize faces and detect who they are that are built into the ESP32. Now, to try this out, we just need an ESP32 camera, and we'll also need a FTDI programmer in order to communicate with it, because unfortunately, it doesn't have a USB interface. Now, today, we're going to wire everything up, program it, and then we're going to test the limitations of facial recognition, because as you can see, this is a cheap little Wi-Fi microcontroller, and I don't expect it to be able to have a high degree of distinction between very similar faces. In order to follow along, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description to see all the required components, but in general you'll need a computer, a FTTI programmer, and a ESP cam. Once you have all that together, then we can begin. Now, in order to get started with this project, you'll need to get around the fact that this doesn't have a USB port. So for that, we'll need an FTTI programmer like the one you see here, and you'll be able to find a link to this in the Nullbyte article. Now, you'll need to also take the connectors for the FTDI programmer and connect them to the ESP32 cam. And you'll be taking the ground and connecting it to the ground port. You'll be taking the 5 volt and be connecting it to the 5 volt on the opposite side. You'll be taking the TX and connecting it to the UOR and the RX and connecting it to the UOT. Now, once these are all connected, then you're actually not done. You can't program this board unless you short two pins, which are the ground and the IO0 pin. So if I go ahead and short this by putting the second pin here, all I need to do now in order to program this board, since I've shorted it, is press the button, which unfortunately is on the underside here, or just unplug it and plug it back in, and it'll boot up ready to be programmed. So if you get frustrated while setting this up, then number one, have you gone ahead and shorted this pen? Because if not, then it will not enter programming mode and you won't be able to program it. As soon as you have this wired as such, then we can go into Arduino IDE and simply flash the board with the default camera sketch. Today, we're going to go ahead and set up this ESP32 cam so that we can look at the facial recognition capabilities and start messing around with them. So this is the sketch we're going to be using, and to get here, we're going to need to take this JSON address, copy it, and we're going to put it into our preferences in Arduino IDE. So when we go into preferences, we should see a, the additional board manager URL. If we click there, we'll see a list of all the different board manager URLs we have. And in my case, I already have the ESP32 index, but I can just paste that here. And there it is again. I'll press OK. And what this has done is added the JSON link to our list of indexes that will be updated whenever we look at the available boards. So if I go to the tool section and then the board, board manager, I should be able to now look for the ESP32 boards. And this will, after I install it, make sure I have all the example boards, which is what we will need for this demonstration. So here we can see there's a bunch of example boards. We'll install them. And since mine are already installed, I won't click on remove. But once yours are installed, then we'll be able to go over here, click on tools, go to the board manager, and then select the AI Thinker ESP32 cam. Now, once we have that, we should be able to go over to file, examples, and then under ESP32, we should see the camera example. And from there, the camera web server. And that will bring you to this sketch here. Now we can go ahead and make sure that this line here is uncommented, meaning there's no slashes in front of it. And that'll select the pins for the AI thinker model. And then here, go ahead and put the network name uh, that you want it to connect to, your Wi-Fi network, and the password right here. So once that's all done, you'll need to find which port all this is connected to. All right, so in a terminal window, what I'm going to do is type DMESG 
to find out what port this is connecting to. So I can see that it's connected to, uh, let's see, USB, uh, T2I USB 3. So I'll go to Tools, Port, T2I USB 3, and this is now selected. So the last remaining thing is make sure that you short the pins um, from the IO zero to ground because otherwise this won't be able to go into programming mode. So assuming that you've done that and it's now connected and we have the right board selected and we have the right port selected, go ahead and press upload. We should see that it compiles a sketch and then sends it to the board. And if this is successful, then we will go ahead and unshort the, uh, the pin that we were shorting before. And that should allow us to then use this. Let's go ahead and see if it works. There we go, and it's now uploading. So I noticed that uh, it's really hard to reach the pin or the button on this sometimes if you have it plugged into a breadboard, as I do. So I just went ahead and unplugged it and plugged it back in. And since I shorted it, uh, it actually won't go into programming mode until you uh, cycle it or power cycle it. Unplug it, plug it back in, or press the reset button. Either way, you just need to make sure that it restarts before it is able to accept programming. So this is going ahead and continuing to send the file. And as soon as it's done, then we should be able to look at the serial output to see exactly what's going on and if we've successfully been able to join the Wi-Fi network. So it looks like we are now at 100%. So we'll press Control Shift M to take a look at the serial output. And of course, we don't see anything because we are still shorted. So I'm going to unplug the pin from being shorted. I'm going to unplug and plug this back in really quick. There we go. It should now be in the correct mode and it'll start up and let's see if we can get any output. There we go. So we now have a camera streaming on this IP address. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and go to this Wi-Fi network. And as soon as that's complete, then we'll just copy this address right here and take a look at the camera. All right. I'm going to go to a web browser. All right, and here we go. So let's go ahead and start the stream. And I'm going to go ahead and up the quality a little bit. The most we can do is 400 by 296. And again, this isn't the best quality, but it, it should be enough to get us started. So uh, all right, here we go. Um, we have pretty basic capabilities here. The stream is not very fast, and it's not a beautiful camera. But if we go down to the bottom here, we should be able to start face detection. And this is the beginning of what I'm talking about um, when it comes to some cool stuff we can do with this. Now, I now am being detected by the camera. And if I go back to the Arduino IDE uh, serial output, you can see that the detections are being logged. So if I were monitoring the serial output, I would be able to use these uh, detections. I could even probably just grep for this if I wanted to make a really simple bash script. And by monitoring the output on the serial port, I could make a program that detects faces. So maybe I could tell when someone is outside my door or something like that. Now that's pretty cool. So on a very basic level, facial detection is a pretty simple process. We're just identifying faces and trying to maybe figure out what is a face and what is not. But the real test here is going to be facial detection. So let me show you how to actually start doing facial detection and enrolling a face. So we're going to click on face recognition. And all right, now we have facial recognition enabled and we can see we get an intruder alert. So this intruder alert means that we are detecting uh, a face and that it is not currently enrolled. And if I go back to the Arduino output, then I can see we're getting a negative one for detected. So we're basically getting a warning that we're seeing someone who is not in our database. That's a very flattering shot. All right, so now we're going to click on enroll face and it'll take several pictures of me in order to try to get a bunch of variety. So I'll try to move around a little bit. Okay, we got four, five samples. Okay, and now I'm subject zero. So we're doing facial recognition. Uh, we basically have the ability to detect whether or not it's me. I'm gonna go back to the Arduino output and you can see now we have detected zero, meaning it's detecting subject zero. 
So I'm gonna go ahead now and have our production assistant come over and I'm going to enroll his face and I'm gonna see if it can detect the difference between our faces. So Michael, go ahead and come over and I'm going to go ahead and stay right there. Very good. Now I'm going to, well, it's not even, okay, intruder alert. I'm gonna enroll your face. All right, look directly at it. Three samples, four samples. Okay, and now five samples, and now we have subject one. So if I look at the Arduino output, I can see we've got subject zero and subject one enrolled. When I turn it back, I can see we've got subject zero. Turn it back to Michael. I can see we have subject one. So even programmically, I can now tell who is looking at the camera, whether it's subject zero or subject one. Now we're gonna use, as you can probably see from my uh, browser that's open, this person does not exist.com to see if we can fool the camera into thinking that one of these fake people is either Michael or myself. So let's explore the limitations of fa facial recognition and see if we can actually trick this by presenting it with photos of people that aren't real and seeing if we can overwhelm its limited capability of understanding what it's looking at. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up this person does not exist.com and we're going to go ahead and load a bunch of faces and see if any of them can falsely trigger as a known person now that we've enrolled two different people. Okay, after running this for quite some time, we've seen that even though we've had a wide variety of faces, none of them so far have actually triggered a false detection. Now, let's see if by introducing a couple different angles, we can get, the, get this to identify Michael as me instead. All right, we have it registered as subject one. Uh, so we have an intruder alert, so we're able to get some false readings. Subject one. All right, so we can get it to m m basically identify him as an intruder, someone that's not registered. But as you can see, turning his head uh, will basically break the ability to see and uh, or even recognize his face. And then when he tilts his head up, it can be recognized most of the time correctly. But there are instances from angles such as a high angle where it's just simply not possible. And because none of the enrollment photos had an angle like this, it is pretty confused and can't identify Michael properly. So while we haven't been able to get Michael to be identified as me by accident, we have been able to get him to be identified as an intruder and also to just not be registered at all. So as you can see, the limitations of this microcontroller are that it can't seem to see faces when they're tilted to the side or at a different angle, and it can't recognize faces when they're at an extreme angle because even tilting your head back is enough to make it think that you are suddenly an intruder. As we've shown today, there are a couple limitations to what you can do with a basic microcontroller when it comes to facial recognition. However, it is still pretty awesome that we can begin to write applications that consider someone's face as a factor. And already, we can use the serial output from this microcontroller to write a program that can interface with it and determine whether or not someone's face is recognized. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you get stuck or if you need to solve any problems, you can always check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.